In this video, we will learn how flash memory like SSD, memory card, and USB flash drives works, and how a library of data is stored in a fingernail-sized area. Flash memory is used in SSDs, USB pen drives, SD cards, mobile phones and many other digital devices, because it has no mechanical parts and it is completely static, hence it has many advantages over other types of memories. Let's learn from the very basics how flash memory works, and we will also create a small flash memory. As you can see we have three battery cells in series, which have total 4.5 volts and positive and negative connections, are coming out of it. We keep these battery cells in front of us. This is a LED light. We place this light right in front of these battery cells. Now we connect the wire from the positive of the battery to the positive of the LED light. And connect the wire from the negative of the battery to the negative of the LED. The LED light is light up as the circuit is complete which is usual. Now from here something interesting starts. Here we have a MOSFET transistor. By this we try to understand a big phenomenon of the physics. First we understand the points of MOSFET transistor. Any MOSFET transistor always has three points, source, drain, and gate. The MOSFET receives current from the source. The MOSFET sends current out from the drain and the gate acts as a switch, which controls the flow of current. We will not make things too difficult to understand. Let's take the experiment further. We connect the drain of the MOSFET to the LED light and the source to the battery cell. As you can see nothing happened. This is the gate of the MOSFET transistor. This is a small wire we have. We connect this wire from one side to the gate of MOSFET. And on the other hand, as soon as we connect it to battery positive, the light turns on. And as soon as we connect it to the negative, the light turns off. No matter how many times you repeat this, the result remains the same. That just once connected to the positive, the switch is permanently on. And when connected to the negative, the switch is permanently off. And this point is very interesting that it does not have any mechanical parts. And this switch works in a solid state. Let's go further and understand another phenomenon of nature. We remove the battery. And after 30 seconds, put the battery again. So we find the switch in its previous state on. No matter how many times you apply power on or off, the switch does not change its state. If we turn off the switch, it will remain in the off state every time power is applied. The metal, oxide, semiconductor field effect transistor or MOSFET is the most common type of transistor today. It works like a switch and it have relatively very low leakage of current and remember their on or off status for decades. Let's further increase our understanding to electronics. If we hold the gate wire in one hand, and by simply touching the positive and negative terminals with the other hand, it turns the switch on or off because the switch requires a very few electrons to turn on or off. This makes the MOSFET a successful switch. Let's increase our knowledge beyond this limit. We know that even a terabyte of memory it contains nothing but a zeros and a ones. Digital memory consists on only two values, one or zero, no other value is possible. So we needed something that could store our two possible values zero or one. Since MOSFET acts as a switch in on or off state, so it can store and represent zero or one very well. When the switch is on we take it as a one, and when the switch is off we take it as zero. We know that the basic unit of a computer's memory is a bit. A bit is a value of 0 or 1. Let's design 1 byte memory using MOSFETs. We know that a group of 8 bits is called 1 byte. Let's design more memory cells by connecting MOSFETs and LEDs. This cell can store one value either 0 or 1. We add it to the system. Similarly we increase the number of MOSFETs to 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. 8 bits is equal 1 byte. Now we connect all the LED lights with the battery from the positive side. And connect all the MOSFETs to the battery from the negative side as well. Our 1 byte memory is ready to store data. This is our 1 byte data let's store it in our flash memory. The first bit is 1, we turn the switch on. The second bit is 0, we turn off the switch. The third bit is 1. The fourth bit is 0. The fifth bit is also 1. The sixth bit is also 1. The seventh bit is 0. And the eighth bit is also 1. 
we have successfully saved our one byte data in this flash memory. Let's shut down our computer and cut the power off. We wait for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes we try to retrieve our data again. We connect the power. And our data is ready. We write one and zeros according to switches status on or off. We have retrieved our data from flash memory. Let's compare it with previous data. And when we compare it with the previous data, it is exactly the same data. But are LED lights used in computer flash memory? No, lights are only for humans understanding. Instead, a microcontroller is used in computer to know the on or off status of the MOSFET. And it's also controller responsibility to turn on or off the status of the switch. Because no voltage is required to maintain the data that is why it is called non-volatile memory. This is the magic which saves a large amount of data. As technology continues to evolve, the MOSFET size is also getting smaller and smaller. And now it's just a few nanometers. Hope you understand how flash memory works. If this video is helpful, please support us. So that we can make more videos like this in future. Thank you so much for watching.